So one of the many ways that psychology has gone bad in the 20th century is the Milgram Obedience Experiment. This experiment took place in 1961, and um, the researchers were trying to understand how far people would go inflicting pain on another person if someone in authority instructed them to do so. So they were studying obedience. What makes people do what someone in authority tells them to do? So this came about in part um, after World War II because of the Holocaust and trying to get, a, get some sort of handle on why so many people were doing so many terrible things um, that they would normally never do. And so psychologists thought if they could figure out some way or, or figure out ways in which people are manipulated, um, they could help combat some of that. Um, so this was the call for participants. Um, this was the actual ad that was placed um, for people to come in. You can see they're going to give you the whopping sum of $4 for an hour of your time. Um, that was a different amount of money back in 1961 than it is today. Um, they're going to be paid $4 plus 50 cents car fare, and that's amazing, um, for an hour of your time. And here are the qualifications for what they're looking for, um, and the little uh, form that you cut out. Some of you have probably never ever done that. You have a piece of paper, you cut something out, you put your name on it, you put it in an envelope, you mail it off, and things come from that. Um, most people don't do anything like that today. It's all done, of course, um, on the computer. But this was the call, and people responded because, you know, hey, there's money. So there were some guidelines. Um, there were three people who were involved, the experimenter, the learner, and the teacher. The teacher is the subject of the experiment. So the teacher is the one who we, who the researchers, are paying attention to, whose behavior they are measuring. Um, the, this role was always played by the people who answered the call on the ad. The people who answered the call on the ad, though, did not know that. They thought it was a randomly assigned role. The learner's role was always played by an actor and always played by the same actor, but the teacher had no idea. Um, the experimenter is the person who's running that experiment. So it's whoever is working on behalf of Dr. Milgram, or sometimes it was Dr. Milgram, in there to um, oversee the experiment. So at first, the teacher, so the subject, the poor guy off the street, was given an electric shock to get a sense of how it felt. This was the only real shock administered in the entire test. However, the teacher did not know that. Okay, the teacher thought all along throughout the duration of the experiment that he was administering electric shocks at increasing voltage to a stranger behind the wall because someone in authority is telling him to do that. The teacher believes that for every wrong answer that that learner gives, and remember the learner's the actor, that that person will be given a shock and each time they get something wrong the shock increases okay so the psychologists were trying to figure out how far will people go how many shocks will it take before people will say enough so here's how things were set up um, E is the experimenter so that's the person who's overseeing the whole thing T is the teacher, so you can see they're in the same room. The teacher is the subject of the experiment, again, the person who came in off the street. And then L is your learner, and they're positioned behind the wall. So the teacher never can see the learner after the shocks begin to be administered. Okay. The teacher has met the learner briefly in the hall where there was the um, assignment of roles. This is where the teacher thought it was a random assignment that he got the role of teacher. Um, so he does have a visual of what this person looks like, um, but he's not able to see that person's reactions as the shocks are being administered. And again, there are no actual shocks being administered. The only shocks that were ever administered were a, were a very low dosage one to the teacher so that there would be some awareness of uh, what it might feel like. So. No shocks in real life. Pre-recorded sounds were played for each shock level. So there was a machine, there's a slide of this at the end of this presentation. There was a machine that talked that showed the voltage as it as it intensified. 
Um, and so there were sounds because the experimenters wanted to control the experiment as best they could. There were pre-recorded sounds for each level of intensity so that each teacher, each subject, heard the exact same complaints and the exact same level of distress. Um, in addition, the learner complained of a heart condition and he could, made that complaint. It was also pre-recorded for every single subject who engaged in the experiment. So if the teacher, the subject, wanted to stop the experiment, so they're going along, they're giving these shocks, and they're like, oh my god, I can't keep doing this anymore. I'm hurting this person. Um, I don't want to do this anymore. Why am I doing this? The experimenter, who is the one in charge of the experiment, he's got the white lab coat, he's all very official, he looks, you know, like somebody you wouldn't want to mess with, someone who had authority. Um, the experimenter would give these same four verbal prods to every subject. And then they were also measuring at which time the subject stopped and refused to, in his mind, inflict any more pain. And again, they were not actually inflicting pain on the learner. So the prompts were, please continue. The experiment requires that you continue. It is absolutely essential that you continue. You have no other choice. You must go on. You have no other choice. You must go on. And so people responded in a variety of different ways. Some people stopped early. Some people went all the way. If the subject still wanted to stop after the fourth prod, the experiment was halted. Otherwise, it was halted after the subject had given the maximum 450 volt shock three times in succession. So the teacher was thinking that he was giving 450 volts of electricity to the stranger behind the wall three times in succession and that's when the experiment was stopped. In the first set of experiments, 65% of participants administered the largest shock possible although many expressed discomfort in doing so. But they went all the way to the end. At some point, every single subject did question the experiment. Why are we doing this? Why do we have to go on? What is this? Why is this important? But 65% in that first set of experiments went all the way through to the end. So Milgram, who was the researcher, summarized the experiment in his 1974 article, The Perils of Obedience. And he said, the legal and philosophic aspects of obedience are of enormous importance, but they say very little about how most people behave in concrete situations. I set up a simple experiment at Yale to test how much pain an ordinary citizen would inflict on another person simply because he was ordered to by an experimental scientist. Stark authority was pitted against the subject's strongest moral imperatives against hurting others, and with the subject's ears ringing with the screams of the victims, authority won more often than not. Authority won more often than not. The extreme willingness of adults to go to almost any lengths on the command of an authority constitutes the chief finding of the study and the fact most urgently demanding explanation. Ordinary people simply doing their jobs and without any particular hostility on their part can become agents in a terrible destructive process. Okay, think back to the Holocaust. Moreover, even when the destructive effects of their work become patently clear, okay, so even when the destructive effects of their work become patently clear, so the screams are going on, I have a heart condition, oh my god, please stop, please stop, it hurts, and they are asked to carry out actions incompatible with fundamental standards of morality. They don't mesh with what most of us consider to be acceptable behavior. Relatively few people have the resources, okay, so have the inner fortitude needed to resist authority. This is a very, very important finding. This tells us a lot about humans. So, there were ethical concerns, though. Um, the experiment raised concerns because of the extreme emotional stress and inflicted insight suffered by the subjects. So the subjects were the teachers, the ones who thought they were um, inflicting pain on someone else. Um, 
They were supposed to always be reunited with the learner at the end of the experiment, but that did not always occur. So it was important, it should have been important for the subject to know when he left the building that he did not cause any physical harm um, or emotional harm to anyone else. Um, but that didn't always happen, so that was one of the problems with the experiment. Um, another interpretation of these results was from Robert Schiller, um, also from Yale, and he said that people have learned that when experts tell them something is okay, it usually is. So the trust for authority runs deep. So when people go around calling themselves doctor this, doctor that, doctor whatever, or they set themselves up in roles that they have not really earned or that they do not have credentials for or that they're not, you know, um, they're not able to really carry out, people will believe the position more than they'll believe their own gut reaction and response. So it's very interesting. So what would you do if you're sitting around being asked to administer, administer shocks or administer some kind of pain to someone that you don't know? Someone in authority is telling you to do it. How far would you go? And can you really know if you're not in that situation? This is um, the machine, and you can see the little levers. These had the voltage above the top, and as the learner um, made a mistake, they were administered a shock all the way up the spectrum. And you can see, of course, in the red, as we get higher and higher and higher, the teacher, so the subject of the experiment, is pushing down these levers over these words that say extreme intensity shock, danger severe shock. And in many cases, 65% in that first study, the subject kept doing it. So, fun facts about being human. So take a moment and watch the video of the Milgram experiment that's posted in the course to get a sense of how this actually unfolded.